Okay, so let you know what we're up to. We're gonna we have two original pre-war RB75 banjos that are original flatheads, original five-string banjos that left the factory this way, all original parts. Okay, pretty rare. Um, and the first one happens to be in great condition. And what it means when you have all the original parts is you get whatever sound you're supposed to get. You don't have something a new part that's kind of fighting the vibrations. So uh, the first RB75 is in almost near perfect condition. And this banjo is not actually for sale, but we're just doing it because we're going to be playing some pre-war conversions. So we're going to play this banjo first, and then we're going to play other banjos. And what you can do, and I guess we'll do it too, we'll, we'll put some time codes. And so if you want to, for example, compare this banjo and the time code's 30 seconds to this banjo and we're playing the same thing at 4 minutes and 12 seconds, you'll be able to go back and forth between banjos. So, uh, so we'll start and we're going to do Lonesome Road Blues in three different registers. And here we go. I'm going to set this one down, and uh, the next banjo we will play is a, uh, this will be a one. This will be a one-piece flange one uh, with lots of wear on it, and uh, we're going to play the same song. Hopefully, we've got these pretty good. Okay, so if you want to compare these first two banjos, just listen to the time codes. And I'll try to play uh, things similar. So here we go. Have a, and this is a lot of fun, by the way, to get a bunch of banjos together and play them. Are we ready? <laughs> Next one is a TB2 conversion, and incidentally, that one conversion started out as a hoop banjo, and a tone ring was added, and a five-string neck was put on it. So the next banjo we have started out as a tenor banjo, did not have a tone ring; it had a hoop. So we put a uh, tone ring, a Uber tone ring in it, and a, a really good neck, and let's. Uh, hear what this one sounds like. Now, once again, we'll note the time codes here. And 
And if you've watched a lot of videos we've done, I play pretty hard, so I'm backing off to hopefully let the banjos breathe a little bit, because you can actually take an instrument and play it so hard that you lose a lot of the tone, you actually stun the instrument. So here we go with the uh, TB2, start out as a tenor, here we go. <laughs> TB2, uh, and um, of course what people have been trying to do for years is to duplicate the sound of these banjos uh, with new parts and everything. Now, I'm going to go over, kind of stretch just a hair here, and uh, we now have a, uh, a TB3. TB3, these are all one-piece flange banjos. And uh, this banjo was a little unusual because somebody decided uh, to finish it black. So once again, I mean, it looks kind of cool. But what it, what it does do, if you want a three banjo, uh, you can buy this one cheaper because somebody did refinish it black, you know? But once again, it looks cool. Okay, so this started out as a uh, Walt, uh, I'm sorry, mahogany banjo. It did have a uh, uh, raised head tone ring in it. We put a flat head in it and added a five string neck because it was a tenor. Here's what it sounds like. <laughs> switcheroo here uh, and why are we doing this well we're doing this because a very good customer of ours said hey what's the difference in pre-wars uh, sounds different banjos different woods would you go through the pre-wars that you have and find the one that you ones that you like the best and I said okay I just happen to have two classic RB75s here, so I'll go ahead and, and make a video and include the RB75. And don't... Don't be surprised if you like some of these banjos as well as the RB75s. And the other thing about pre-wars and the reason that I like the originals is when you play them, you can feel them. You, you feel different. Now, the sound may sound very similar, but you feel a lot different. And in many cases, you play with more energy. You uh, play faster, more accurately, just because of what that banjo's doing to you. All right, so let's, now what this is, is a TB-11 that we took and put all new hardware on, has all new hardware, 
and the 11 is what's called a blue banjo. Now, it has a thin layer of plastic mother of toilet seat. So we had that removed and we skinned it with mahogany, okay? So it looks like a three, even though it's really an 11. And if you take it, the uh, resonator off, you'll notice that the shell is blue. We put a Uber HR30 tone ring in it, a uh, Tim Davis neck, and it's really a, it's a great banjo, uh, pre-war banjo for, I would say, almost nothing, you know, compared to what some of these things cost. So let's listen to this one. Here we go. Now, if you haven't really played it pre-war, the main thing that we notice when I've had students come and play pre-war conversions is that their, their slides, their hammer-ons, and their pull-offs sound more clear. So if they're having trouble getting a good slide and on their banjo and they play a pre-war, Many times they hear the sound and they're able to uh, play that sound. All right, so that's that. So I'm gonna hand this banjo to Andy for a second and then I'm gonna pull out the second RB3, okay? This banjo and the first one I played are identical with the exception of this banjo. It has a maple neck, so it's gonna sound a little different. And this banjo has a lot of wear on it. And this is, once again, th these aren't for sale because the reason I love a banjo that has a lot of wear on it, I can take it anywhere. And uh, if somebody happens to bump it, it's not gonna depreciate. Unlike this other banjo, which is in such good shape, I keep it in a safe. even play it very much because uh, I don't want to, you know, wear the finish or anything. But anyway, so uh, here we go. Lonesome Road Blues again. So that gives you um, four banjos that have uh, pre-war shell. So the three things that influence the tone the most are the shell, the resonator, and the tone ring. And the neck, to a lesser degree, neck uh, original neck will do it. And so all these banjos have the th th uh, two of the three components. They have the original resonator, they have the original shell or rim, and then they have a 
tone ring uh, where somebody has spent tremendous amount of energy trying to copy the pre-war, okay? So you get a lot of the pre-war sounds from these, and uh, if adjusted properly, and if everything fits properly, they'll sound better than anything that uh, new people make. Then the original, of course, you've got an original flathead tone ring, which is pretty major, and in this case, an original five-string neck. So um, that's pretty much it. So uh, we're going to go through the video and write down the time codes. And uh, so you can kind of just go back and forth, listen to one banjo, and then go back to another. And if you really want to get uh, specialized or get detailed, since I'm playing down the neck, mid-neck, way up the neck, you literally could write down the time code if you wanted to compare, let's say, this banjo up the neck to this banjo up the neck. And just, you know, spend 15 minutes and write all those codes down, and you can just go back and forth, back and forth. And if you listen to this for two or three hours and keep going back and forth, you'll probably have a, a really good understanding of what the pre-war sound is all about. And that's it. And if you have any questions about anything, you can call Andy at 404-372-5482. And of course, we have these banjos at Banjo Warehouse if you want to come by. Um, it's really, not only do you have to have all the right parts, they have to be set up properly. And it's really nice to be able to compare multiple ones so you can kind of hear that common sound. Well, that's it. So. Uh, you guys have a great day, and we'll talk to you later.